Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Happy Friday to all of you. And a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Paul W and Ronnie. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up today, good news for the long-term prospects of America in the chip making industry as Intel is set to invest $20 billion for an Ohio chip fab, expected to begin two fabrication plants on a 1,000 acre site to begin operation though by 2025. So no short-term alleviation here. The site will be to research, develop, and manufacture its most most advanced chips and will have the option to expand to 2,000 acres and up to eight fabs. The Commerce Secretary said this investment is a big win for Intel for American manufacturing and for American consumers who can look forward to lower prices as we bring home production of the semiconductors that keep our economy running. This new site for Intel will be in addition to other U.S. sites in Arizona, Massachusetts, New Mexico, and Oregon. We've heard all about the chip shortage. Also very important to note is the geopolitical situation and the reliance on Taiwan. So alleviating that for all American companies and the supply chain in general, having more production in America is a very, very important thing in the decades to come. A quick note on this no internet in Tonga situation because yes, Elon and Starlink have been brought into the conversation. Long story short, there was a volcano that erupted and damaged an undersea cable, leaving about 100,000 people without internet. The good news is the telephone system for international calls seems to be up and running, but the Wi-Fi might be up to a month. Some people that are working on the job are saying it's going to take eight or nine days to sail and collect the equipment to do this repair, and it will be lucky if the job is done within a month. And some people out there were trashing Elon for this tweet where he said, could people from Tonga let us know if it is important for SpaceX to send over Starlink terminals, basically looking for confirmation if they really do need to get involved. But then people are saying, well, how are they going to let you know if the internet is down? So there was that, but Elon also said it's important to know because this is a hard thing for us to do right now as we don't have enough satellites with laser links and there are already geosats that serve the Tonga region. That is why I'm asking for clear confirmation. The main driver for me wanting to share this and shed some light on it is this. The vast majority of intercontinental global internet traffic, upwards of 95%, travels over undersea cables that run across the ocean floor. So at the very least, something to keep in the back of your mind and maybe something we can do a deep dive on in the future. As more and more new folks come into the Tesla community, I think it's important to mention things like this. Can someone explain the functionality of the two states of this button in the FSD beta? referring to this. Let us all remember the FSD beta and navigate on autopilot are two different sets of software. You'll know which one you're in based on the visualizations. If you're on city streets and using FSD beta, pressing this button does nothing. If you're on the highway, however, this button is how you toggle on and off, navigate on autopilot. Adding to the list of organizations who are going to be rating these driver monitoring systems, you can now add consumer reports to the list. In the first iteration, only Ford and General Motors have passed the test or got some points. Why did these two companies actually get points? Well, they're the only systems that stop the driver from using automated systems if they looked away for too long. Very important to note here that this test for Tesla was done with autopilot, not FSD, mainly because FSD is still not available to the masses. New for this year, Consumer Reports will give points on driver monitoring systems, which will be included in calculations for its annual auto top picks. These ratings come out February 17th. Next year, CR will deduct points for inadequate driver monitoring systems. I personally don't put much stock into IIHS or Consumer Reports, and I probably put even less on the driver monitoring aspect. If you can't encourage a human to pay attention while they're driving a 2,000 pound pile of steel, I don't know what to tell you. I'm a lot more focused on the actual autonomous driving features, and yes, this stopgap of driver monitoring might last for years and years, but in the long term, I think this is something that will eventually go away once full autonomy is actually here. Just a note here, and it could be nothing, but on the Tesla order page for the Model 3 Performance, the lowered suspension has been removed. Now, of course, a lot of people are immediately calling for air suspension coming to the Model 3, However, I don't think that's likely as if you take a look at the Model Y for the performance, the lowered suspension is still there. So what is the reason for this removal? At this point, honestly, I am not sure, but I thought it was worth passing along. The Tesla Twitter page shared some new images of the graffiti artwork on Giga Berlin and GF4 Tesla also shared a quick video.
Monroe Live on Twitter just shared four more images of their team actually removing the Model S Plaid battery pack. Videos to come soon. Here we have a great chart shared by James Stevenson on Twitter of the Tesla killers. So next time someone says, oh, the competition is coming for Tesla, go ahead and just show them this chart. Interesting business model here as this new company Autonomy is launching a Model 3 subscription service in California. The founder of the company has said EVs have reached a tipping point and it's clear that the Tesla Model 3 is this generation's Prius. I would interject it's a lot more than that, but he goes on, financial responsibility and the avoidance of debt is also at an inflection point and subscriptions have become a pervasive, sustainable business model and a cornerstone of modern digital life. They are now bringing that subscription model into the auto industry as you can now have a month to month contract after a three month minimum term and it's designed to allow consumers to order your car in 10 minutes. Autonomy is starting just with the Model 3, but other models are supposed to be coming later. So it could be a good way to test out an EV for a few months and see how it goes, but that brings us to pricing. It ranges from $550 a month with a $5,500 starting fee, up to $1,000 per month with a start fee as low as $1,000, and there's a $500 deposit when the subscription is activated. But if you go to their website, it's actually easier to see. There's just this slider right here. So depending on where you want your monthly payments to be, it will change your start fee or that one-time deposit. These figures do, however, exclude tax and security deposits. Right now, this is only available for iPhones in California, but they say expanding to new locations in Android soon. And included in the subscription, routine maintenance, road side assistance in 10,000 miles per year, but this is prorated monthly, so that's about 833 miles per month. So let me know, is this new car subscription model a good sustainable business model? I think it's a cool way to try out a Tesla for a few months. It's not going to be the most cost effective option, but very rarely subscription services offer you that advantage, so it is what it is. Rob covered it last night, but in case you missed it, Tesla insurance is now officially in Arizona, California, Illinois, Ohio, and Texas five states total. Sony is reportedly looking for partners for its entrance into the automobile market. We see the risk of ignoring EVs as greater than the challenge they pose. Just to be clear, this new endeavor for Sony is not a done deal as they declined to say whether a final decision on whether to go ahead would come this year. Sony's partners so far for the two EV Vision prototypes were with Magna International, as well as Bosch, Vallejo, and Almotive. There was a great video shared by a new YouTube channel titled Five Years Ahead. I want to play you a quick clip of this one on Tesla's Octavalve, but I would highly encourage you to watch the whole thing. I will of course link it below. To be clear, the Octavalve is separate from the heat pump and the Octavalve kind of supports some of the heat pumps functions. One, instead of having separate systems and redundant parts, we can manage all our components with a single system that can move heat between components. Two, we've eliminated all PTC heaters through clever use of existing components. Three, we've turned the battery pack into a thermal energy storage device. The long range pack currently in the three and Y would be capable of storing two to three kilowatt hours of heat energy in addition to the 82 kilowatt hours of electricity. Four, we're also technically capable of storing solar energy without needing photovoltaics or any extra parts. And five, the system is able to get smarter in how it operates through software. It could potentially predict future heating and cooling demand and adapt to how it operates in different conditions. GM is set to invest $154 million in its New York plant for EV motor parts. GM will use the investment to renovate the facility and purchase and install new machinery to produce stator modules, the stationary part of rotary systems in electric motors. Workers at Lockport Components will continue to build parts for GM's gasoline powered vehicles and they're set to add about 230 jobs between 2023 and 2026. So the first NGDV or next generation delivery vehicle has been spotted. In case you missed it, Oshkosh Defense won this $6 billion contract over a 10 year period. This is set to be the next post office mail delivery vehicle, as I mentioned, NGDVs. Looking really futuristic. However, this full-scale model might not be the final production version. It is, however, expected to go into service in late 2023. Ford will actually supply engines, transmissions, suspension parts, and other components for this next-gen model. Oshkosh Defense is set to start building this at its South Carolina plant in 2023. Really wanted to mention this because of this. Oshkosh will only build a mixture of 10% electric and 90% ice-powered vehicles despite Biden's recent executive order directing the government to electrify its entire fleet. 
Once again, watch what they do, not what they say. GM working on hydrogen powered generators to make EV charging portable, looking to have 500 of these bad boys in place in the United States by 2026. This is one of those things that's really cool in theory, but is this ever going to come to fruition? Color me not that confident. The company plans to test the waters with a hydrogen powered mobile power generator or MPG and a rapid charger called Empower. As mentioned, this would be really cool in theory. You don't have to break ground or do any digging. You don't have to connect to the grid and you can move it around. However, the hydrogen infrastructure in the United States is very sparse, meaning refueling these is going to be expensive. If GM wants to have 500 of these in the US before 2026, that's about three years or roughly 166 per year. We'll have to add this one to the prediction tracker. Last up today from Drive Tesla Canada, according to paperwork for the Model Y registered in Norway, the maximum amount of weight the car can safely carry is now 562 kilograms or 1,239 pounds, which is 379 pounds more than the current generation Model Y. Why is this? Maybe it has to do with the structural pack. We do not know for sure. It also says that the Model Y has new Sanyu brake discs and it confirms the addition of the AMD Ryzen processor and a new power steering ECU. This is a great example of that Tesla headline 27 changes to its cars per week, things that would take other automakers years to implement. That's gonna do it for today. Quick and efficient episode as I have some obligations today, but please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.